Hi, this is Mark from alongislandwatch.com. Last week, I brought you five watches, or five cheap watches, excuse me, from the store that do not suck. I figured what better way to counter that with some of the most expensive watches in the store. So I picked five again for you today. Uh, I tried to pick a, a variation, all different brands, uh, a Chrono, an Auto, uh, a GMT, some different materials and cases and stuff. So we can get like a little, a little tasting of five different brands and see what makes them so darn expensive. Make no joke about it. Uh, some of these watches I showed you are $60 or $65 Bertucci in my last video. You could buy like 70 of them for the price or 60 of them for the price of some of these kind of nuts. Is it worth it? Well, that's, you know, that's really for you to decide. On my own wrist today, I am wearing the original, one of the original gangsters. This is the uh, ISL 02. Uh, this was one of the first Islanders to ever be made. And on my other wrist, uh, my Squale 1521 collab piece with uh, Seconde Seconde, uh, with the shark eating the hand, uh, pretty nifty. Let's see some pricey stuff. So with the prices we're gonna be talking about, you should really expect the best, the highest of everything. Um, believe it or not, this is actually one of the least expensive pieces we'll be discussing. Uh, this is the Formex Reef. This is the baby reef that came out recently. It's the 39 and a half millimeter version. Uh, you know, who spends a couple of grand on a watch from a brand that people haven't heard of? You really have to be a connoisseur, and I think that's what my channel is all about. Not about, you know, name brand on a watch, rather what makes the watch you know, what makes the watch either expensive or what makes it special uh, for you? And where are you sinking your money into? And I think Formex is a great brand to start that out with because there isn't much in the way of advertising. Oh, actually, a lot of the brands I'm going to mention, there's not much in the way of advertising. So your money is going into what, you know, exactly the composition of the watch. So the Reef is a chronometer, as it says on the dial. Comes in a couple of different colors, uh, white, blue, green, black, I want to say. Uh, this is the 39.5 millimeter version. There is a 40, whatever it is, 42, 43 millimeter version uh, as well. They're all the same price, uh, 1960 bucks. Running on a chronometer grade Solita SW300-1 automatic hand winds hacks. Screw down crown, we unscrew the crown to set the time, blah, blah, blah. You guys know the drill. We're not here to do a full a full review. Um, I'll just give you the basic. So it's a 39 and a half millimeter case. It's 11 thick. So it's 11 for a diver. Not just a diver, a 300 meter water resistant diver. Flat sapphire crystal, 45 and a half on the lug to lug. It's a solid screw down. Case back, of course, look how low profile that is. So what are you paying for here? Um, excuse me, 22 millimeter lug, solid link bracelet, solid link, solid end link, beautiful clasp, Really sweet, and of course, hidden micro adjust. So you're getting a chronometer, uh, a Swiss movement chronometer grade, which means it's been certified to, uh, well, it's, what is it, plus four, minus two seconds a day in various positions and temperatures. Beautiful bezel. Actually, this has the quick change bezel system. You can snap this off with your fingers to, and get other bezels for it. The devil is always in the details. So let's see some of them. Look at the facets on the dial, Look how nice they are. Look at the hands, the shaping of them. You know, everything is perfect. There's so much going on. And as I come in, I zoom in, look at the polishing on the case, the lines. Over here, you have a high polish and then a nice vertical brushing. Super duper nice. It really, you have to struggle to find any kind of flaw with it. And again, that's what your money goes into, all this extra fine case polishing, a better movement, a beautiful bracelet, size with, whoops, size with screws, of course. Finishing on the bracelet is top notch. Probably knew a Damasco would be part of our conversation. This is the DC-96. Uh, in the blue, it comes in, what, like a champagne, a blue, and a black. This is running on their in-house center elapsed seconds c51-6 top performance movement with a silicon escape wheel 
Uh, some of their models in the past, like the DC66, they did offer for an upcharge, a silicon escape wheel. That is the only way this one is coming. Um, I don't think it's actually running, so let's, let's give it a wind. So it's basically a modification of a, like a Valjoux type chronograph movement. You have a useless 24 hour dial here on the right. That's obviously there for balance, but then you have elapsed seconds and center elapsed minutes. Super cool, running seconds on the left and uh, elapsed hours on the bottom. So this is a 12 hour elapsed chronograph. This is a dress chronograph. They call it the Elegant Series. It is 41 millimeters in diameter. It's 14.6 thick to a flat sapphire at 49.7, just shy of 50 on the lug to lug. My goodness, look at that. Look at the movement finishing. Again, you're paying for that and they're happy to show it to you via the exhibition the sapphire case back. Made, made in Germany, of course, 100 meters of water resistance. Uh, this is a screw down crown. Not really required on a 100 meter water resistant watch, but good to have. Beautiful, beautiful work. 116 grams, I happened to write that down. And you'll see that when the elapsed seconds gets to one minute, you'll watch the minute counter tick over with perfection. It snaps over nice like, uh, well, like the old Lomagna movements. Date window tucked away between the four and the five. What will this run you? Well, a mere $4,098. Again, you have to really understand and appreciate what's going on here. All the work they've done to the movement. Again, the case finishing. It does have a nice clasp. Yeah, it is a standard um, leather strap. But all the magic is going on in here. You know, in a, I'll say a heritage branded watch, you know, this is easily two, three X what you see. Uh, all the work and engineering that they have put into this. Look at the machining on the rotor. Beautiful, beautiful. So I showed you the stainless steel reef diver. I showed you the Damasco Chrono. I wanna show you a diver entry from Squale. Difference here, we, have not, we now have a carbon composite case. So it is super lightweight, 102 grams on this um, kind of hybrid leather sport strap with the yellow accents on it. They make this in three colors, uh, yellow, blue, and orange. I decided just to show you the yellow one. Uh, $1,810. It's running on a Salita SW200 Elaborate grade, so a decent movement. Uh, hand wind tacks, you guys know all that stuff. It is 42 millimeters in diameter, 15 and a half thick to that flat sapphire crystal. 49 on the lug to lug. It is a solid stainless steel plated uh, case back. And um, let's see, 20 millimeters on the lug, 600 meter water resistance. Do you need that? Good heavens, no, of course you don't, but they've done it. Uh, obviously a beautiful bezel, wonderful clicking. It is a carbon fiber insert. I think you can actually see the patterning. It is also, I should definitely mention, a carbon fiber dial, but not a, um, what's the word? Not a, uh, a strand dial where they have the, the weave, the 090 weave. This is more of a, um, just a carbon composite and they've sliced off a piece and polished it so you get the randomness of it. It looks really nice, really cool. Check out the case work. Again, you're here, you're paying for just, you know, the know-how and the engineering to manufacture a case like this and a dial like this. The movement is drop in, of course, as they haven't really done anything to it, uh, but there's engineering going on here. So another entry from Made in Germany, in case it wasn't clear, the Damasco was made in Germany, the Formex is Swiss made, the Squale uh, Swiss made, and here is the Laco made in Germany. This is the Hamburg GMT uh, 862165 DIN 8330. DIN uh, is basically uh, standards in Germany uh, for v various um, various specs that the watch must meet. Uh, akin to, I don't know, maybe like ISO here in the States, I guess. Uh, they made two of these, uh, they, a straight three-hander and then the GMT. This is the GMT, $2,890. This is running on a Salita top grade SW330 GMT movement automatic hand wind tax, blah, blah. The case 
This is actually 904L stainless steel, so Rolex steel, but it has been blasted to give it that almost titanium effect. It is not titanium, but it's been blasted into this beautiful lusterless finish. It's dark sand blast. It's 40 millimeters, it's 13.6, and then 49 and a half on the lug to lug. It is that solid screw down case back with the etching, or excuse me, embossing of the plane. 200 meters of water resistant sapphire crystal, of course, a 20 millimeter strap, 102 grams on the strap. Just a really, really nice watch. Look at the finishing. The finishing on the case is amazing. In case you uh, weren't familiar with the SW330, it is a, what they call a caller GMT movement. So when I pull the crown out one click, one direction will change the date and the other direction will move that GMT hand in one hour increments as read on the chapter ring of the dial. I love the lusterless finish of this case. It is beautiful. There's so much going on. Dial is nice and flat. Flat meaning uh, matte in color. There's so, mu there's so much going on. At the same time, there's so little going on. Let's get the hand out of the way. So you check out the dial balance. I love that the date is done in a negative. I mean, 369, the aviator's triangle at the 12. Screwing the crown in, a breeze, even with gloves. Look how aggressive it is. Beautiful, beautiful watch. Oh, bezel. Bi-directional bezel. It's really, really sweet. So the Damasco was our most expensive entry, um, but this one comes close. This say hello to the Marathon CSAR WW194014 at 3,942 bucks. This is a beast, a beast of a watch. I mean, you could just, <laughs> let's put the baby reef earning its name right next to it. It's kind of insane. This is a literal beast. On the bracelet, on the 22 millimeter bracelet that Marathon does, this thing is insanity. Okay, so it's running on a uh, Swiss automatic movement, uh, you know, like a Valjoux kind of Salita 550 kind of movement. Um, you can see the back. What makes um, Marathon different in most cases is the use of tritium and that is what we got have here. So we have a chronograph which has also married the use of tritium tubes on the markers and on the hands. Of course tritium will give you uh, light for you know about 20 years or so. Um, never needs to be charged and that is the beauty. Thus the radioactive symbol and the H3 noting the isotope of hydrogen that is in those little glass vials. I've discussed this many many times. It's a 46 millimeter case. It is indeed 18 thick. I did not write down the lug to lug, but it's in the low 50s or so, low to mid 50s. Believe it or not though, I own a, um, I own a jumbo. The CSAR and the jumbo are kind of the same uh, cases. Uh, the JDD oh, and the JSAR, uh, I own one. I own a jumbo day date and I wear it on my little six and a half inch wrists. Yeah, it's a little crazy, but so what? I don't care. Sapphire crystal, no AR coating. Um, I told you it's eight, did I tell you? It's 18 millimeters thick, insanity. Uh, this 22 millimeter strap, lock, lock out. Marathon has recently changed to these awesome new rubber straps, which are super duper quality. Comes with two lengths for people with really long wrists. And if you're buying a watch like this, you might have a really big wrist, unless you're like me. Uh, 300 meters of water resistance. And it is a chrono. Oh, it's running, right? Yeah, it's running. So. The chrono buttons are screwed down, so you have to unscrew them. And if I press it, there goes the chrono hand. And then we have, so what do we have here? We have running seconds at the left, elapsed minutes at the top, and elapsed hours at the bottom. Um, much like the Damasco, what the Damasco has done for a point of interest is they have moved the elapsed um, minutes counter from the top to be center minutes. And I think that's going to wrap it up for our little exploration of expensive watches. Uh, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Questions, comments, concerns, anything else you want to say, put it down below. I'll be sure to address it as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.